You've seen us build a canopy over the last two episodes. What better place to test it out than on the fabulous Morton Island. We're here for the weekend to put the Enerdrive Voyager through its paces and also our new canopy build 2.0, actually 7.32A. So we're on the ferry, uh, it leaves from the port of Brisbane. It's about an hour and a half over to the fabulous Morton Island. Now, give you a quick tip. If you are the first time coming over to Morton in your 4B, when you're on the ferry, let your tires down because when you get to the other end, you're straight onto the soft sand onto the beach and nobody wants to see you bogged straight away. It's just not a good start to the holiday. Let the tires down, let the car do the work, all good. We're gonna get off, we're camping in the Northwest camp zone this time. Andy's come with us, he's just off camera and Logs is here too. We're gonna to have a cracking weekend. We're gonna to get to camp, we'll show you tonight or tomorrow morning all about this Enerdrive system, what we've done, how the charge is, what it's done so far, and also the, the new generation evolution of the canopy and what we've done to that and, and how it's all working, how we've packed it. So uh, we're probably, we're halfway across, we'll be off the boat soon and uh, we'll get on to camp and we'll see you when we get there. So, I'm no chef. Looks might deceive you. But I reckon any good steak needs to be salted. Brought up the room temperature and salted both sides. <laughs> Steaks are beautifully salted. I got the pan ready to go. So, we're, we're going to induction tonight. But the first thing we're going to do is air fryer um, hot chips. That is going to take about 20 minutes. Steaks are going to take about oh, 10 to 15. So we'll whack the chips on, then we'll get busy with the steak. How good is a freezer when you're camping? All right. So these are pub style beer batter. Nothing better. We should have brought baking paper, but we didn't. That's all right. This was a last minute trip. It's Andy's air fryer, so we can clean it up tomorrow. That's fine. Will you, Andy? Yep. All right, let's turn this on. Also very keen to see how this Enerdrive system works just quietly. This is our first go with it. So, uh, Ando, what do chips do? 180 for 15? Actually, there's actually a chip setting on this one, so we can just swap across to chips. 200 degrees for 20 minutes. Oh. Um, and every about seven to eight minutes, oh, every, yeah, in around there, we're gonna shake the chips up, make sure they're all evenly uh, uh, cooked. So. We got that going and Rich is gonna cook some steaks now, mate. All right, so the chips are on their way. I'm gonna let this go for about five minutes, then I'll start cooking the steaks because we want them to be ready together-ish. So we've, we're a minute into it. I've just looked at on the inner drive on the Voyager, what sort of draw we're getting and 124 amps this bad boy's pulling out at the minute for 20 minutes. So it's gonna be a lot of amps anyway. Keep going. So this is gonna be quite simple. Bit of a cast iron pot here. I reckon we just want to do quite low to start with. Mr. Garlic Paste. Let's put him in. That fridge is cold. That's, mm. I suppose that's the only job a fridge has is to keep things cold. So currently we're drawing 177 amps. <laughs> the Voyager, if it was a person, would be running very, very fast and breathing very, very hard at the minute. But it seems to be coping very well. So what we've done, we've put a little bit more butter in here, a bit of garlic, and now it's time to put these in. Now, this has gone quite a low heat, because what we want to do is just have them cooking evenly. This is according to Ando. So they're all in, they're in their house. The chippies, ready? Not looking too bad. Um, let's do a quick power check. We're drawing 177 amps at the minute quite a lot I might go up so this seems to be going it's it's actually this is incredible 191 amps so we've got 
air fryer's going, induction cooktop's going, the lights are going, the fridge is going, the Voyager's just going. <laughs> what else have you got? This is so good. So I've had 12 volt systems for a long time and I tend to get this going and that turns off or I tend to get this going and something happens in there but everything's working beautifully. And Ando actually said to me earlier, do you know why that is, Dad? And I went, no, why is that? He goes, because you didn't wire it up. It comes pre-wired. I actually reckon it's true. Right. <laughs> yes, it's so true. So we just took Andy's steak off about two minutes ago. It's around the corner resting because um, he likes his pretty rare. Logs and I are medium, medium rare. Pause the chips because we don't want them to be ready too soon. And we're going to rest these for about 10 minutes while we cook the rest of the chips. So that will do the steak. Turn that off and wipe that on. Look at those. Oh, how good, how good is I that? Reckon. I'll let this run a little bit. We'll give it 20 minutes to breathe and play by ear type of thing. So, 44 minutes, 43 minutes. We're at 56% charge, but we've cooked a full meal. We got hot chippy chippies for the camera. Yeah, very good. So what we've done is we've cooked a full meal, well, steak and chips, if you can call that a full meal, on the induction and the air fryer. We started at 97%, I think, and we've ended up 56%. We're going for a big drive tomorrow, so we'll, we'll replenish that easily, but the Voyager has cooked us all this. It is so good. Let me get the steaks. But I will report back on how fast this is charged up again. And, um, yeah, we'll do something else tomorrow. But so far, the Voyager has got a massive tick for me. So, when I woke up this morning, I checked the, the battery, it was at 41%. So that was after all that cooking last night and ran the fridges overnight, had the light on the rooftop tent and had the fan going in the rooftop tent too, which is quite nice. So we've been driving for about an hour. We're now right down the south of Morton. We're at Karingal, right beside the gutter bar, which we will go to later. But let's see what charge we're at. 57% in an hour. So that's pretty cool. We've put in, what's that? We've put in 16% charge in an hour, so that's that's pretty cool. That's without any solar yet too, so the sun is, it is pretty early in the morning, so the sun's just getting up, so we'll go and find a spot to cook some brekkie, and we'll let the sun get onto the solar on the roof. So we've got a 190 watt Enerdrive panel sitting on top of the rooftop tent. <laughs> So we've pulled up at the beach for a bit of brekkie. The solar is in full effect now, um, punching in just under seven amps at the minute. The solar panel is flat. If I lifted the rooftop tent up so it is at a proper angle, I would imagine I would get even more, but I'll tell you it's gone up to seven amps. I will take seven amps. Um, if we're cooking now with the induction, we're probably gonna be a bit um, deficit neutral because we're probably taking out sort of what we're gonna put in. So we can cook for free. So what's cool about the inner drive is all these um, all the information that we get at the minute. So we see the DC DC is putting in nearly seven amps from the solar. We're not using the Anderson at the minute, but the load. So the fridge, uh, there's no loads really because we haven't got any lights on. If we were to turn that on, we would be pulling three and a half amps out with just the lights. The fridge at the minute, because it's not cycling, is only pulling 0 0.06 of an amp. That'll cycle. It's about three or four amps. So at, at the current state of what we're doing, if we left it as is and didn't touch anything, this would be fully charged, it says in 16 hours. But that'll be faster as the sun gets higher in the sky and again, it'll, um, there'll be more amps come in. And of course, if we drive, it'll go in a lot faster too. But at the minute, uh, first impressions, first night using the Voyager, uh, it's done everything we've asked it to and, and more. And it looks good and it's neat and it's, it's tucked away nicely. It's something that I don't know how I didn't have this before. And let's, let's not forget a solar blanket or an extra solar panel on the ground, just plug it in and we could get this up to 15, 20 amps without massive problems, I would imagine. 
uh, to charge it up faster. We're just running the one 190 watt solar panel at the minute. I could probably fit a second one on there if I wanted to. I don't really need to. So there is more options if you want to get the charge in faster. For what we do, this suits us perfectly. I just had a quick squeeze at the solar. At the minute we're putting in between nine and 11 amps. We're right on the beach. It is the middle of the day, so we're plenty of sunlight, but yeah, it's putting in 9.2 amps, which for a 190 solar panel, I'm really happy with. We did absolutely drain the battery last night. With, we Yesterday morning we did bacon and eggs on the beach. And last night we did some chips in the air fryer and we got the induction out to cook the steaks. And then this morning, We've cooked bacon and eggs again and boiled the kettle and boiled the kettle last night uh, to wash up with. So it's absolutely had a flog and we've had the lights on. The fridge has been running 24 seven and where we camped, which is just behind us up here, um, in the morning we don't have any sunlight because there's a lot of trees everywhere. So I've pulled it forward just so the sunlight can get into it. So we're already back up to 43%. We started at 22 this morning when we, uh, when we finished brekkie. So, but mind you, it still ran fine. We still had a good few hours to play with, but now that we're in the sun and we're not moving for a while, that'll go back to probably 60% before, uh, before we have to move. Then if we wanted to, we could add another solar blanket, as we said before, or take it for a drive to get up there faster. So let's go through the canopy. Let's start from the absolute start. It's an MW custom canopy. It's 1700 long. Um, I got it made just to follow the contours of the old uh, farm truck tray. It's steel tray, but it's an alloy canopy. Now, we started from scratch, as you would have seen in the videos. I just want to run you through what I've done and how I've done it and why I've done it, I suppose. So we started with the Enerdrive Voyager system. Now, I fitted it first with the battery and then I've put everything else along with it. So this is the MW, um, kitchen now this is a new thing i hadn't seen this before it's about um i think it's 800 wide undo these this thing folds down we got our sink and out here table and then pantry items in the sides here we've got heaps of stories now at the minute i'm kind of using all this here for there's washing up chopping boards plates cups tea towels medical stuff in this bit here i've got bread wraps some apples in there some potatoes chips all that stuff that's kind of does you don't want to get crushed beside it we've got the 85 liter uh, upright fridge and that's opening in towards the pantry so we can still get to that easily and a bit of garlic there that could probably go up there i absolutely wanted it set back so it followed the lines of the voyager so it all looked purposeful when you open it up I'll put that all away later. That's this side. So this is the kitchen side. Oh, also while I'm here, um, I've got two strips, three actually on this side. I've got two on the door. These are the hardcore tri-colored lights. They're on a switch on the Voyager. And then one of the other switches is also running the rooftop tent, which has got a fan in it, USB charging points, and it's got a light in it. So that, that runs a tent. But what I like now in the old canopy, well, the old canopy setup, I couldn't isolate the rooftop tent, but I've isolated it in this setup which means I'm not drawing power when I don't need to. So I'm super happy with this side. This has worked out really well. This is our second day of using it. A few things that I don't like. I don't like when this kitchen's all the way out. I can't easily get to the, to the plugs and the ciggies on the Voyager, but I think if I just put this um, sink away, that makes it a lot easier. And I don't use the sink that often, so I can probably work around that, but it's still very accessible. Round the back, nothing's really changed here. I've managed to get, there's smaller Max Tracks that I've noticed they've brought out, Max Tracks lights, and they fit up there. This is just jimmied up here in the meantime. When I get back home, I've got Max Tracks mounts properly that I'm gonna fit into these. That's the second spare tire carrier, which I don't think I'm gonna bother carrying a second spare because I don't know if I'm ever gonna need it. We've put shore power here, so that's 240 that goes into the Voyager from ever at a caravan park, which I won't be, or at home and I want to charge it quickly, 100 amp charging. We'll charge that battery from flat in two hours. Right, this side. So this is the side that I've just finished. I could never decide on this side what I wanted. It was always a mess. I had a big 
60 liter fridge. It was really big and it kind of took up a lot of space and it was awkward to fit stuff in. What I've done, I have got a Dometic 30 litre fridge that's coming to slide straight in here. It isn't quite here yet, but that will take care of that big 60 litre fridge and that will be everything I need. On this side, shower stuff, camera gear, laptops, pots and pans, big knives, big awkward stuff. Just stuff that I'd want to keep neat, but I don't need necessarily all the time. And then up top here, this is more the storage locker. So we've got the hot water service, clothes, pillows. We've got our cameras in here, my clothes. And then the inner drive, the slimline 200 amp hour batteries up at the top here. And then at the back, at the very top is Starlink. We've got the router and the 240 adapter is up in there. I've punched a hole through the canopy for the RJ45 connection. And I've actually mounted the Starlink on the roof rack permanently so we've got not that you want internet everywhere because you're camping i get it but if you need something for work or you you want to be in touch with the main or whatever it is it is handy to have all of this does jack off so these four clips come out jack off legs in thoop, off it goes undo the alternator cable undo the reverse camera cable and the starlink cable and we're in business we're back to a single cab ute with sides on it so that is that thoughts on how this has gone um so far i am actually really really happy with it i don't know if i would have done anything different i gotta find i'm gonna put more of these i've got them in here these tie down points because i want to be able to tie stuff down a bit more i do have them i just ran out of time before we came away but they will go in So we actually got back from Morton about a week ago, a week ago last Sunday. And there's been a fair bit happened since. Now, we came back, the Dometic fridge was here. So that was bad timing, but kind of nice to come back to the Dometic fridge. We've used it last weekend too. This thing's brilliant. Metal catches, fits in, actually fits where I made it. Thought it would fit. I put this um, brace in the middle. So this is more solid on the top now. And I've actually secured the backing board to the canopy so this whole thing now is really solid and the other big change is we've ended up upgrading to a 300 amp hour uh, btec slimline battery from Enerdrive. now the reason we've done this is we are planning to do a few more long trips the 200 was sensational don't get me wrong the 300 is just a bit of insurance that if we don't have sun or if we're parked under trees and we don't want to get the big solar blanket out or for not driving much for a couple of days we can actually be off grid for a little bit longer well for indefinitely now with the 300 we can use all of our inductions and air fryers and all that stuff that you don't need but it's really 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 nice to have boil the jug do all that sort of stuff without having to worry about am i going to drive today or am i going to drive tomorrow on morton as you saw the battery performed immaculately but it did drop down into the 40s 30s sometime percentage wise this won't this if it gets down to 70 percent we're, we're still not in any sort of trouble we've still got heaps and heaps of power left so that being said that is the canopy fit out done it's the inner drive voyager shakedown done and the first trip under our belt and could not be happier with this whole system so watch out more travels coming thank you very much for watching we'll see you in the next one